Bell's Palsy and Speech Therapy. Can SLPs treat Bell's Palsy? What is Bell's Palsy and what should SLPs know about it? Well, Bell's Palsy is a condition where the facial nerve becomes swollen, inflamed, or compressed from edema as a result of a viral infection like herpes simplex or varicella zoster virus. This leads to a temporary and most often unilateral facial paralysis. There's no actual trauma to the nerve. However, the symptoms can be alarming and greatly impact quality of life. Since this isn't something that can be strengthened with exercises or fixed with speech therapy, do SLPs even have a role in Bell's palsy? Absolutely. I'm going to dive into some facts and statistics about Bell's palsy, assessment considerations and treatment considerations that SLPs should be aware of. Let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Bell's palsy usually results in the spontaneous and complete recovery of the facial nerve. A 2002 study by Peterson studied Bell's palsy in 1,700 patients and found that 85% of patients began to spontaneously recover just after three weeks. The definition of recovery in this article is the first sign of muscular movement in relation to the onset of the palsy. As for the remaining 15%, the onset of recovery was observed within three to five months. Overall, 71% of the patients in this study returned to their baseline function. All of that being said, the idea of providing therapy to individuals with Bell's palsy has been really controversial, especially when there's nothing you can strengthen through exercise. Medical intervention for this condition may include physician-prescribed corticosteroids and antivirals. The earlier the treatment, the better the outcome. We've learned a lot about the treatment of Bell's palsy over the last few years, and for that, I'm really grateful. I can't tell you the amount of patients with it that I've seen that wanted us to just fix it right away, or they're bummed to hear that they might just need some time and medication. Swallowing and speech can be impacted, and SLPs have a role in assessing current functions and the changes from their baseline. The purpose of the assessment is to trial and determine the most important compensatory strategies. Find what works and find what doesn't. The assessment should include a thorough case history to find out their baseline, cranial nerve exam, and a clinical swallow exam. Find out what's frustrating them the most. Just a heads up, this part can be really tough emotionally on the patient. They're usually a normally functioning individual and all of a sudden they have a massive difficulty doing the seemingly basic tasks of eating and speaking. This is a time to really hone in on your counseling skills and educate the patient. You're going to work through some strategies until you find something that works. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like or subscribe button, leave a comment or turn on the notification bell. The purpose of our treatment is to educate and reinforce compensatory strategies that are found to be the most effective. Farger and Colson reported in a 2017 study that the use of electrical stimulation during the acute phase of recovery is not supported by evidence, and there is a low level evidence for patients with chronic symptoms. Some strategies to consider based on the severity of the symptoms include drinking through a straw on the unaffected side, manually achieving lip closure, chewing food and keeping the bolus on the unaffected side of the oral cavity. Sometimes patients might feel down or upset about the sudden change in their speech and swallowing. This can also lead to feelings of embarrassment, especially if they find it more difficult to manage their saliva or they worry about drooling. This is also where our counselor hat can come in too. SLPs do have a role in counseling patients as they navigate a new way of life, whether it's temporary compensatory strategies or a permanent shift, quality of life has ultimately been impacted. Your job at this point will be compensatory strategies to help the patient eat and drink and communicate effectively. I had a patient about eight years ago who actually was a local celebrity in our town, and he was so frustrated that we couldn't just fix it with exercise. 
We were able to identify some ways that he could still chew and drink from a straw in order to maintain nutrition and hydration, but I felt so bad for him. He explained that he had a relative that had had a stroke and he couldn't figure out why we couldn't just do exercises to strengthen that. Want a quick start guide to Bell's Palsy? Check out the free editorial reviewed resource all about Bell's Palsy on the MedSLP Collective at metaslpcollective.com forward slash Bell's Palsy, where we also have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases. And we'll stick that link in the description below.